So we're talking another not star rookie. I guess the first one was like Cam Reddish. This one, Matisse Thibel. He's not a star technically, but he's effectively a star because everybody on the internet has been praising the guy's defense, me included. Matisse Thibel is probably already one of the, I don't know, 9 to 10 or 11 best perimeter defenders in the league. He's not going to play enough minutes to really get in contention for all defense anything. But um, this dude is nuts on defense. I mean, per 100 possessions, he's up to five steals and two and a half blocks. And eight personal fouls, so he makes you feel it a little bit. And that's not taking into account the, like, well, it is kind of taking into account. But he's also got like over 20 deflections so far, which I'm sure steals and blocks also have to do with that. But they're not going to deal with every single one of those, right? And you just watch the dude, and his level of detail on defense is something that you don't see very often, where it's it's little things, like in transition, where instead of just going right to his guy, he anticipates what the ball handler is looking at and he tries to get in the ball handler's vision and he's been able to tip passes just off of that and if he's not able to do that like if if the guy doesn't throw the ball or whatever he has the awareness to still get back to his guy and it's just really wild to watch in real time because he does things that a lot of NBA players don't even think about doing or if they do they don't do it very well I mean With him, it's not even gambling for a steal. It's like, I don't even know. Think of a term for it. (laughs) Because he's so damn good at, like, going for the thing and then just getting back to the boring, just possession defense or whatever. But he's also so damn good at just, like, keeping his hands up. And when he's defending a guy, say if his dude is moving off the ball and he's going baseline or whatever... Most dudes will just, like, keep a hand on the dude, whereas Matisse keeps one hand on the guy, and then he also puts his other hand in the air to block any sort of pass that might come through. He's so damn good at changing direction on a dime. I mean, there's the one play that I'm stealing from Zach Lowe's um, 10 Things column from, like, two weeks ago, where he was in a dead sprint trying to catch up with Kevin Herter on a fast break. Herter pulls up for three, and Matisse just stops on a dime, turns around, and is able to contest Herter's shot. And it's like, this dude just broke human momentum. (laughs) Like, I have no idea how you just stopped running from a full sprint and you were able to get into this guy's shot. And Herter either airballed it or it barely hit the rim or whatever. The first game of the season, he was giving Kemba Walker problems. I mean, the way he's able to strategically do things that you wouldn't think about on defense or just nuts. Like sometimes the ball handler will get by him, but he does it like kind of by design almost to where he is then able to reach around and knock the ball loose or he anticipates where the next pass is going to go. So he just like has his huge arms just around you. It's complete insanity what Matisse Thibel is able to do. And he's a rookie who's been playing like 17 minutes a game. And I'm just trying to think, like, what does that mean for his career moving forward? Like, once he's able to get consistent minutes, and he does need to make progress offensively, there's no doubt about it. But the sky is limitless for this dude defensively. I mean, what is a player comparison for him? Like, could you say Andre Robertson? That's something that I've seen. But even so, I don't know if I really agree with that. I mean, Andre Robertson's best statistical, at least, defensive season, he got one steal and one block a game. I think Thibel's got way more potential than that in terms of just putting up defensive numbers. I mean, maybe Tony Allen is a little bit more real. Tony didn't get the blocks like that, but, you know, he did have at least one season at two steals a game, and he had a bunch of seasons where he was, like, a couple decibel points away from two steals. That might be more in line. But at the same time, Thibel is 6'5 with a 7 foot wingspan. Tony Allen was 6'4 with a 6'9 wingspan. So he probably still has more potential there. And then, of course, there's the god Robert Covington, who's the guy that is kind of like my go to for 3 and D dudes because I just think he's the best one. If we're not counting like Clay, of course. 
then I think Covington is just kind of the the number one dude. Covington, you know, for his career, it's one and a half steals, basically one block. But if you look at like, like he's had times where he's put up two steals and a block a game or pretty close to it. That might be more in line, but also I kind of think Thibel can be a better one-on-one defender than Covington. Like Covington is an amazing team defender and he's still a good to sometimes very good on ball guy. But I feel like Thibel even has a little more potential on ball there. So I don't know. Um, Defensively, the dude's nuts. But of course, there are two sides of the ball. Let's talk about Thibel's offense. Um, The shooting is the main goal, right? Because uh, up to this point, 23% on threes, 24% from the field, 60% from the line. Not ideal. No doubt about it. In college, his three-point percentages were... I think good enough to be intrigued. I mean, he shot 36%. In four years of college, he shot 78% from the line. And his three-point attempts were pretty consistent for his last three seasons. Now, his last year, he did shoot like 30% from three. I don't know. I mean, the, the, the years prior, he was a lot better. So I wouldn't freak out about that too much. I don't think his form is picture perfect. I don't think it's horrible either. I think you can work with it. The free throws were good, of course, in college. And then as far as just... I don't know, other things offensively. Like, can he get to a point of making two dribbles and then making the obvious pass or finishing at the rim? And, I mean, I, his, his potential in transition and all that is pretty good. So, that's the goal. I mean, with him, like, he honestly only needs to get to, I don't know, 12 points a game just off of not having any black holes on offense. So, like, not sucking as a shooter and having at least a little bit of a pulse as a ball handler. I think that's kind of it. Because at that point, you're able to just play him 27, 28 minutes a game at the minimum, and he can just have that defensive impact at all times. Like, that's the type of dude where the advanced stats suggest that he's actually, like, the ninth best player in the league. And, of course, he would not be that. But it's just one of those things of, like, oh, okay. So, yeah. Now, as far as how that makes sense within this Philly team, well, that's a little bit of a different story because I don't know if they have all the time in the world to wait for a guy to figure it out with his shooting. I mean, they're going to keep him. I'm not implying they get rid of him or anything, but it's just if he's not shooting well and it's like round two, he's probably just not going to play, at least with like Ben Simmons and granted... Ben Simmons would be playing like 37 minutes a game at that point. So, yeah, I mean, as far as this season is concerned, I don't know if the real Thibel is going to come out like that. Like, if we're just going to see him be this force in the postseason, but I think it's going to happen eventually, is the point. And once it does, it's going to make Philly look even better. And my Celtics could have had him, but they wanted whoever they wanted instead. Oh, well. Yeah, Thibel's good. 